to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. This is Baz. Today we're going to go over the debug menu. And uh, first things first, I guess, if you're coming from RPG Maker, you're probably like going to play test and you're wanting a full screen, you're spamming F4, it's not working. In Pixel Game Maker, you, you hit escape and then it will full screen and then you hit escape again, it will, it will uh, get out of full screen. So just so you know, Okay, so now let's get into the, the debug menu. So if you while you're playtesting, hit F1, you'll see some options come up. We got a little debug options here. So let's just go through them. We got our sound. You can adjust your sounds and stuff. We don't have any in our project at the moment. Um, you can do stuff with your input devices. You can also minimize these uh, by double clicking. Yeah, double click in here yep and then you can minimize them keep them off if you know you're going to need one again you can close it and then game screen you got some options you can also full screen it here you can magnify it you can set some filters which you can also do in the project settings this one's for like a game boy style look this one is the blur that you get like an rpg maker when you pause the for the menu then you get like an analog analog look you can also set your language which i want to go over eventually is the localization options that you have here in pgm because it's really supported or it's uh, really easy for the indie developer to localize your game in pg pgm all right so let's uh just cancel out of here let's go to the next one debugging so here we got all the stuff that we can see if they're accurate for instance, your tile walls. Let's just click on that. And you can see what exactly is a tile wall. You can also see what is a wall collision. So now you're walking around and you see all the wall collisions from all the objects in your game. And you can see, you can better <clears throat> uh, look to see if you need to adjust anything. So let's look at some other stuff. We got collisions. Collisions is what your attack hits so let's see your attack and boom there it is you can now attack and if you notice right off the bat we notice that the particle effect i set up is way off i mean i need to change that hitbox to be a lot uh, bigger because you can almost you should be able to pick it up right there i i believe but you can't because your collision is not touching yet also, if you remember our house, we set up two collisions or hit detections, this one and then the ones on the side. So let's see that go in action. There we go. So now we see the leaving the house and then we see the, the entering the house for the opacity change. And so now let's do the connection point. Now, the real connection point that we have right now is when we shoot uh, fire our sword bullet. You can see the yellow circle right there. There it is right there. That's exactly where the sword bullet's going. And as you notice, when we're doing the sword bullet, we are even getting the attack, <laughs> the attack normal detection. So you can hit up close or shoot a, a bullet out. So why not always shoot the bullet? <laughs> and let's see here. Let's keep going. So you can have a runtime console. <laughs> so if we clear it and then say we move around, you'll see that just stuff is just going crazy well if we look at all these logs just from a simple move it's our smooth camera smooth camera smooth camera loopback these are the actions that we set for our camera and it's moving because remember it's moving towards this uh this object so you can see <clears throat> as you're going through this game your smooth camera is just working constantly and then let's also go up here. Let's hit this big guy. It's hard to see because of the, there, if I just stay still. You can see that it's doing all the actions in real time. And then once he's dead, we can see, um, yep, enemy shortcuts destroy. So it even shows you that it's calling the shortcut of that action. So really cool. So we can close that. And, and then you can also turn them off so you can't see them. 
so now there's no connection point. We can do free mode, which is similar to, I believe it was holding shift or control, I can't remember, in RPG Maker, and then you could go through tile walls, you could go through wall collisions, etc. Uh, invincible mode, nothing really hurts the players, so no real sense. Uh, frame rate, you see, you can see, and it's really cool. I mean, this, this frame rate, I mean, granted, we don't have <clears throat> a lot of stuff going on, but this frame rate is really consistent for um, even just a little bit that we have. Nor normally RPG Maker, you were just dipping one or two every time, but this one's really keeps it, uh, <clears throat> maintains 60 just perfectly. All right, so we got performance and speed. You can adjust your frames. I'll turn that one off. And show debug for development. <clears throat> oh yeah, this one is, yeah, it kind of shows you the pathing of the smooth camera. So you can you can see exactly where it's moving from and maybe the I, I'm I'm actually really not sure. I just know that you can just see the moving of it. Maybe it's showing the acceleration. I'm I'm just not entirely sure on what that is. But I do know that that blue thing <laughs> is the uh, smooth camera. All right. So let's just turn that off. And so we don't got physics or stuff. I don't know what debugging other parks does. Uh, portal debug. You can uh, see your transitions, which we haven't got into yet. So we'll put that on when we start getting into transitions. You can show <coughs> the camera range restrictions. You can show the player range restrictions. And we'll just turn those off. If by that the if the area is red or blue that means that the player the red one or the camera the blue one can move in that area if you were to go which if you remember you set this up in your scene settings if we were to go down here and say that we only had this area as the camera and player then it would show this part as nothing but your camera <coughs> excuse me here <coughs> Ah, gotta love those cold winters. The start, anyway. So, so yeah, you you uh, you can see those. And then let's go to let's see here. Show debugging for player. Oh yeah, we already did this. And so you can do, you can change your scene. You know, you can change or you can skip uh, load a scene. So let's go to game data. You can see the title of your game which this one you can change. This is the one that is changeable. The creator, you can put all your stuff in here. And then you uh, you can show a simple draw. So, so for this, I think it's about drawing stuff on the scene, possibly. So, because if I hit this, just watch down here. So there was some stuff that changes. And then I think because the particle is going, it's constantly changing. And then once we grab the particle, it kind of goes down. So I believe this is, I'm not really well versed in, in these GL terms. But yeah, it's just showing what's being drawn on the map is what I'm guessing. So then we can also go, oh, whoops, we did that. Go to debug. I'll turn that off. Object data. So we can see exactly what's on the map. We can see the instance ID of it. We can even go further into detail and change things. We can escape that. So here's the NPC. Right now it's currently in idle. And let's see if I move around. Yep, okay. So right here you can see that the player is now in walk. Oh, you can see real quick, it does a walk check. So when I go up against the house, oh, I can't because I'm in free move. Let's uh, <laughs> let's turn free move off and the rest of these I like. So let's do that. And now let's go to object data. We'll just move it over here. And then, so you'll see walking and then boom. It's, it's doing a walk check, and the walk check is finding that you are not moving vertically or horizontally. So 
it's going back to idle and you can see it's flash I'm, I'm just holding up and it's flashing between idle and walk check and then as I move forward or uh, left and right strafing it now realizes oh you are moving horizontal now I'll put you in walk walk check yeah so that's really cool how you can see that shows you your position what layer you're on and the ID and then yeah your NPC really cool you can come in here and adjust each object like that so then you can do a list of the common data and switches. So this object data, when you're right here, these would be the self switches for that individual object. Now you come here to data of common variables and then you can uh, go from here off of those. Oh, it's keeping track of the mouse X and Y coordinate right there. So yeah, really cool system. You can show the grid. I have mine set to 32 by 32 for tiles. So so really you can just get a good sense of uh, the grid, if the objects are placed right. And I clicked on this once, it didn't do anything, so I don't know exactly. And then iteration count and calculation physics. Again, we're not doing physics at the moment. And then you can reload your project data and go from there. So this is kind of the setup I think I'm going to keep it in from now on, just so I can see our hitboxes, make sure, maybe I'll even add the connection point again. Keep my FPS just so I can see how, how the, if, if the game is reacting uh, well or not. And yeah, I hope that, oh, and then to close the menu, just hit F1 again. So that was a nice quick rundown of the Pixel Game Anger Debug system or menu. And yeah, hopefully you enjoy.